Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you how I make my electric igniters. Last few videos have been kind of pyro related, I guess. So if you're into rocketry or pyrotechnics, this might be something you use. So. <laughs> Battery dud. <laughs> Alright, fix that. Alright, let's see if this works. Nice. First step in making these is basically just getting some uh, cheap two conductor wire. You know, give yourself something like a one foot section, whatever you feel is sufficient for your, I mean, if you have a remote igniter like I do. I like to keep this a little bit away from whatever is about to be going off. So if it is a rocket engine and it does uh, catastrophically fail, you know, this distance is usually enough to keep it safe. I have had some rocket engines cato before and, you know, didn't hurt it too bad. Didn't hurt it at all, I don't think. A couple burn marks, but nothing bad. So on the side that you're going to be turning into the igniter, I usually break the... Uh, the conductor there or uh, insulator so that you have two strands snip the one about there that way you're left with two pieces different lengths and grab a stripper use your teeth whatever you want to do grab a stripper that uh that's always a good time. That might be a little long. I'm gonna recut that. Use my teeth. There we go. That looks about right. Then you're gonna take your nichrome wire. I so this is 40 gauge nichrome wire. I just bought 150 feet. That's well over a lifetime supply. I don't know if this company is still in business, but that's Newton's third rocketry. I'm sure it's also on Amazon, so if, uh, if it is, I'll give you guys a link in the description down below. Now, I'm sure you guys won't be able to see this stuff, but I'll, uh, I'll try to sketch something up in CAD so that you guys can really get a good understanding of what I'm doing here. Basically, wrap your nichrome wire around your bottom conductor hold it nice and tight and bend it over and kind of crimp the wire onto itself now ah, the wire broke Well, shit happens. Let's start again. I'm actually going to use another pair of needle nose I have just because they're a little bit less, uh, they don't have the aggressive teeth on them like these do. So you can see these ones had uh, teeth there, which I think actually kind of cut the nichrome. These ones are nice and flat, so they shouldn't hurt the nichrome. They also make some pretty cool uh, tools, actually, specifically for this purpose of wrapping super thin wires. Alright, so that's nice and wrapped up. Crimp the top wire in on itself. Now, you might be asking, why not solder this joint? And the problem there is nichrome doesn't stick, or uh, solder doesn't stick to nichrome. It's very resistant to being wet. Big truck going by. So, we now have two copper conductors connected by a super small amount of nichrome wire. So if we were to plug this in, we should see continuity. So this thing is actually always checking for continuity. And if we plug it in, there we go. We're getting continuity. So 
So we know we have a good connection there. And what I'm going to do now is prepare the dip. So this might be able to light maybe a black powder engine or something as it is. Uh, probably won't work every time, but it'll, it'll work once in a while. The way to really make this super efficient at igniting something is by adding what they call a pyrogen onto it. So I'm going to use nitrocellulose lacquer as a base. You can actually make this by dissolving uh, white ping pong balls in acetone. You can burn test the ping pong balls beforehand and know that they're nitrocellulose. Um, you can also just use smokeless powder. I'm going to add a little bit of smokeless powder to the nitrocellulose lacquer. I'm also going to add a tiny bit of aluminum powder and that's to make a hotter spark as this ignites. And also a little bit of red iron oxide to hopefully react with the aluminum and kind of create a small thermite reaction which as everybody knows is super super hot. So this should pretty much ignite anything you can throw at it. Got a uh, stainless steel cup here. Gonna add some lacquer. Yeah, need to go a little deeper than that. Gonna add some smokeless powder to it. Any smokeless powder should work. Um, this is a kind of fast burning one, which I think would probably be a little bit better. You can also use black powder. I've used tons of black powder in the past before. No problems whatsoever. Works great. Got a couple extra piece of wire here to stir it. This may take some time to dissolve into the lacquer. And if the lacquer starts drying out, you can always add more acetone. All right, so it's probably been about 10 minutes now. And you can see just about all the nitrocellulose, um, well, smokeless powder, which is mostly nitrocellulose, has dissolved into the lacquer. It's pretty thick, but that should be fine. I'm going to just add a little bit of aluminum powder. And if you are curious how to make aluminum powder, uh, check out my other video where we actually make super, super fine aluminum powder from Reynolds Wrap. Well, cheap Walmart knockoff grade, but... Alright, a little bit of aluminum powder. Going to mix that in. Alright, that's pretty well incorporated, so now I'm just going to add some... Iron oxide, also known as rust. And this should create a pretty decent thermite type reaction. There are other uh, compounds you can add to mixes like this to make them even more energetic. Uh, titanium powder, or super, super fine titanium sponge would be great to add to this because the super white hot sparks that it creates. But I think this will be good for our purposes. If you're just looking to set off a, you know, rocket engine or something like that, this should be more than enough to set off a, a sugar rocket. Now the piece de resistance, add a little potassium perchlorate to the pyrogen. That's going to basically allow the aluminum to oxidize super quickly. Some of the aluminum is also going to react with the iron oxide. We're going to have the nitrocellulose in the, uh, in the lacquer itself burning. There's actually, I think, even a small amount of nitroglycerin uh, that is inside of here. I don't know if it says what, uh, what all is contained, but I'm pretty sure there's a little bit of nitroglycerin in smokeless powder. So we'll have those burning potassium perchlorate acting as an oxidizer. This should create a really, really hot pyrogen flame. So I've made a few igniters here. Not sure if you'll be able to see this. You see just a tiny bit of nichrome wrapped around. Only, only one or two loops. You don't want too much. Give it a quick dip. Just the tip. In the words of AVE, and every other man in this universe. 
Desperate times. Usually want to give them a couple coats. This stuff dries really, really thin as the acetone evaporates away. So, going to give them an initial coat, come back, give them a second coat, maybe even a third coat depending on uh, how thin it looks. Usually two coats is sufficient though. Do a base coat and top coat. You can actually add a little bit of extra nitrocellulose. Sometimes you can just dip it in straight nitrocellulose lacquer for the top coat. And if you noticed in the opening uh, kind of credit, whatever there, the, the igniter kind of exploded, it popped. And that's because it had a coating of nitrocellulose around the outside that allowed it to basically build up a little bit of pressure before releasing, and that's that pop you heard. So I'm just going to let these air dry probably about an hour. I'm going to throw them in my desiccator at 140 degrees. That should get rid of all the acetone pretty quickly. So we'll come back, give them another coat, dry them for another hour after that, and then we'll give them a test. So before we actually move ahead and test the uh, dried igniter, what I wanted to do was show you how this pyrogen works. So I painted a little bit on some aluminum foil let it dry and I'm just going to light it up so you can see exactly how this stuff burns. Super hot flame. Very little smoke. Tons of little bits of like molten iron and aluminum powder being ejected there. Bright sparks. Bright burn. That stuff is going to be awesome for lighting just about anything you throw at it. So let's go grab one of the igniters. Alright, so we've had these guys drying for about an hour. Let's give it a test. Got it hooked up in the uh, wireless igniter here. And this is only two coats. I don't have a top coat on it like I did for the, uh, the intro one. So it's probably not going to pop like the uh, intro one, but should be pretty good. Nice. That'll light up just about anything. God, it smells terrible. Mm. Free cancer. Good stuff. But that is how you make an excellent igniter. Super high temperature. I don't know if you can see, but there were some good sparks in there. That'll uh, obviously from the aluminum powder in here and also probably from the red iron oxide kind of forming tiny, tiny little particles of uh, molten iron being ejected out of there and probably some tiny particles of aluminum as well but in the next video I'm probably going to show you guys how to make one of these now this uh, this here was obviously a professional unit but in reality you can make your own for gosh probably just a few bucks on Amazon and super simple to set up and they even come with this cool little remote so good times Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please consider, subsider, please consider subscribing to my channel. And I hope you have a good one. Enjoy.